<laughs> well, it's another Tuesday night in Winston-Salem. We're here live at Earl's for the newest edition of the Coach Harry Show here live on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. An exciting weekend for the Carolina Thunderbirds. This past weekend here at home getting a sweep of the Danbury Hattricks and taking the season series over Danbury and, you know, a little bit of redemption from last season. But now uh, the team comes away with five points on the weekend, as always. Brendan Riley being joined by the head coach, Steve Harrison, special guest here tonight. One of the newest newcomers to this Thunderbirds team, Cody Karpinski, who has taken over uh, in net here as of late for this Thunderbirds team. Guys, thank you for uh, – thanks for joining thanks us for here. Coming. And, uh, Coach, always great to see you, Cody. Great to have you here as well. Yeah, good to see you. everybody here. It's, it's, uh, we got a good crowd here tonight, and uh, it should be exciting. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to hear some of the stories from Cody here, uh, you know, a veteran, a wily veteran here. So <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. Cody, you've been here for a few weeks now. You've gotten your first taste here in uh, Carolina, you know, going on the road now here back at home. How have the first few weeks been for you here? Uh, well, personally, like, this weekend was probably the, the most I felt, um, like, normal. Um, you know, which is which is kind of weird. You'd, you'd expect uh, back and forth with with how often I've been bumping around and, and playing for a while. Um, you'd think it'd be an easier adjustment, but you know, sometimes it just catches up to you. Um, but no, this weekend was uh, finally the first I'd say, like personally, that I felt normal, um, and I, I think it showed a little bit. Um, but I mean, other than that, um, I mean, not that you know I've been playing bad per se but just not not to where I'd like to be um, but I mean the guys have been nothing but supportive since day one um, which has been been great and been made the acclimation a little bit easier and a little bit quicker for me so um, you know hats off to them to, co to come into a situation like he did and, and, and we're, we're in actually I, I talked to another player who came in uh, roughly the same time as him and uh, the, the, the I, I just said with our influx of players and, and, and different lineups every time, and I, I, as I said, uh, I, I mentioned to a, a fan just earlier this week that you know we're starting to regroup again, and 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 we're, we kind of were all over the place there for a couple of weeks. So uh, with different lineups, with different things, guys in different positions, as I said, it was just a a, a week or a ten days or two weeks that that uh, I give the guys a lot of credit. They battled, they battled hard, and and as I said, but it was just not forming the way we always would like to have that. And, the, and I said this weekend here, as he said, um, uh, we started to come together and uh, I saw a lot of great signs of, of where we're going. And, and so this weekend was a big weekend in my mind. It was, and so you're coming off of being swept by Mississippi, and you know, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, words flying around, yeah. you know, throughout, you know, everywhere throughout uh, the organization. And the next thing you know, you guys, you're, you're facing off against a team. There's, you know, the, the big rivalry from last year, and you know, they they're coming into your place. So you got to make a statement. You guys were able to do that here this weekend. Well, I'm glad you brought up the word sweep. Uh, I don't know if I <laughs> want to hear that right now, but um, yeah, no, no, and it's how you respond. We've talked about it from day one. It, 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 every time something happens, it's how you respond and we came out and I, I uh, we had a couple new players come in this week and and, and as I said I, I knew it was going to be an adjustment time but uh, it, it took us a little while to maybe to get going but uh, overall I, I, the, the response from everybody I, I, I thought was great and uh, as I said so I uh, sitting at the end of the weekend uh, you know would you like to have got six points but uh, as I said I, I just like the results and you know if we do go into overtime I'm I'm, I'm so confident in our guys that uh, that, that uh, we'll, we'll get the job done so I, I was happy with the weekend, and as I said, uh, I know that's something we can build on now, and we can move forward. And I mean, exciting games in their own fashion, you know, each way, and you get the 3-2 come from behind victory, then they start to make it interesting there as things got late uh, in, the, in the back half of that game on Saturday, but uh, I mean, the big thing is you take, away, you take away five points on the weekend, now you guys get back on track, and now you can start to set up for this final 24-game stretch. Well, yeah, that, that, that's what you're looking for, is to come. Well, that's that Coach Steve Harrison. That's Cody Karpinski, netminder for the Carolina Thunderbirds. We're just getting underway here on the Coach Harry Show, live here from Earl's in Winston-Salem. we got a lot to get to here on the program tonight across the next 60 minutes or so. We'll break down the action from the weekend. Also take a little bit deeper dive with Mr. Karpinski over here as well. And also I'll turn it over to you guys for some questions here throughout the evening as well. We're just getting underway here on the Coach Harry Show, live from Earl's. And we're back after this on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls 
your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! For over 85 years, Muston and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community value. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. It helps is the sweetest. Make Rita call. Back here at Earl's in Winston-Salem, just underway in the newest edition of the Coach Harry Show here on a Tuesday night. Brendan Riley being joined by the head coach Steve Harrison as well as Cody Karpinski and a great crowd on hand here on a Tuesday here at Earl's. And uh, Coach, well, uh, we talked about it, started things off here, we started to get a little bit into the weekend against mm -hmm. Danbury, but, you know, big weekend as always. Anytime the hat tricks come to town and your team, you know, they had a statement to make here this weekend against a very good team and a team that have been playing better hockey as of late. Well, uh, I think, you know, the situation from last year where, where uh, we lost there in the final there and uh, 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 still some animosity, I guess, or not hatred, I'm not sure if that's quite the word, but pe people want to beat Danbury, and that's a rivalry, and I, I think it's great. It showed in the crowd. I mean, you know, two great crowds, uh, very excitable, and uh, uh, I, I liked it. I, as I said, uh, uh, it, it took us a little bit. Uh, we, we got, As I said earlier, we, we got a couple guys come back, and, and whenever that happens, it, it, there's always an adjustment time. Every time we take a step forward, there's an adjustment time. And uh, it, it's always preceded somebody with some problems and uh, trying to get some continuity together, trying to get uh, uh, other players uh, acclimated to maybe they're in different roles too. So I, I, I think I like the, 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 I like the game on Friday night. I just don't know if we, it, it wasn't unbelievable, but it wasn't bad either. And as I said, we, we, I thought we played very sound very uh, good hockey. I, I thought we helped each other out. And uh, as I said, it was just one of those nights where, you know, if we wanted the points, we were going to have to grind it out. And we grinded it out, and uh, uh, we got the win. Cody, for you, you come in a couple of weeks ago for that Columbus midweek game, really right middle of January. And so now you coming in, you, you find out you're getting you're going between the pipes for, for both those games. And, you know, you weren't here last year, but, you know, that this this – Game, these games against this Danbury team, their importance to this organization. Did anyone let you know how big these games were for you guys going into it? Well, um, I try to approach kind of just every game as a big one because honestly, you never, you know, as an athlete, you kind of never really know when your last one's going to be. Um, so I try not to take any of the games for granted. Um, but I know a couple of guys, um, you know, like I know like Frankie. Um, especially like you know those games mean something to him um, a couple of guys you know had, had been around or had been on the rosters previously um, so I kind of knew going in and and uh, knew that you know Danbury was uh, was is one of the better teams in the league so um, it was definitely evident um, but I mean uh, as far as how I try to approach it I want to beat the piss out of everyone so, <laughs> um, you know I don't I don't I don't care who it is I don't care who's at the other end I just want to win 
And for you guys, you come out, you come out pretty well. You're getting a lot of pressure on yeah. them, but you're, you guys haven't been able to find the back man. That was kind of a little bit of a trend there for your team for the past few weeks, but you know, just struggling at points to try to, to find the back man, getting shots away. I mean, mm -hmm. you had over 40 in the two games against Mississippi. You guys come out quickly again there in game one, but uh, their net minder there, Liam Murray, he was playing well early on. Yeah, well, you, you, you go through stretches like that. Uh, uh, when when, when uh, offense comes and goes, defense should be there all the time. And, and we, so we, we didn't, uh, uh, we've been struggling lately, uh, as, as you mentioned there. You know, we went to Mississippi and uh, won goal each game, and that's unusual for us. And we've got, we've, uh, we kept shooting. And, and I always talked about if you're not getting the opportunities, then, then we have to reevaluate what we're doing and maybe change some things up. But when you should get 50 shots, 48 shots, uh, uh, another 40, another time. So the, the opportunities were there. We just got to try and bury them. And uh, we concentrated on that during the week here. And uh, as I said, it took us a little longer to get going than we wanted to. But uh, I, I, like the, I like the results. Roman Kramer and Tucker Firth, they made their return from the SP. Uh, two guys that were very good for youth up until they left on December 23rd there. They come back. What do they, what do they add for them, you know, them personally, their, their style of play? What do they add to this run? Well, Kramer, you know, he's a great offensive player and, and pushes the puck north, and uh, he, he can put the puck in the net, and, and that's what we've been lacking a little bit. And we're, so we're we're hoping that he would bring a little more pizzazz to our team, and and, and I thought he did. Uh, he can skate well, and he handles the puck well, and and, and, and great puck possession. And and Firth is that that he's been around now a year and, and a steady defenseman, and uh, that that just gives us a little more flavor back in in the, in the back end. And and I thought defensively, I thought it was a good weekend for us. So. He, he just brings that extra player, and he's a veteran guy and a team guy, and uh, they, they both jumped in with both feet. And again, I think there was some adjustment time for them, too, coming down. Uh, you know, Cody's been up and down, and you know, sometimes you go down, you, you think, well, geez, I got to go and do this, I got to go and do that. And sometimes all you need to do is play your best. And, and if you do that, then you're going to help the team. So it took a little time to get going, but uh, overall, it was really good for the two of them. They, they take a 1 nothing lead into the first intermission. Uh, you know, you're out shooting them, you're you're putting pressure on them. Just have man will find the back net. What, what was that message there in the in the dressing room there in that first intermission? Well, don't change. I I liked our period, and and we, we got to continue to to continue what we're trying to do, and and don't get away from it. And uh, I give the guys credit. Uh, they, they hear it over and over about don't change, don't change, and uh, we didn't change. And 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 sometimes. Sometimes it takes you 62 minutes or, or it takes you whatever it does to, to, to get the, the results that you want. And that's all you're asking for is the results. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter if you're, you're, what your percentage is in goal or, or how many goals you got. It, it's, it's how many W's the team wins. And, uh, and if you believe in that, then a lot of times it's going to work out. And sometimes it just takes longer than you want. Well, it took until that third period, despite out shooting them 11-4 to four in that second mm -hmm. period. Still hadn't found the back of that. And then coach Josh Keplinger, he, he comes in. He's able to snap one off the bar. And, and that ties us up at one. It gets the gets the crowd back into it as, as well a little mm -hmm. bit. And, and it got the place jumping once again. It set up for an exciting final 18 and a half minutes and then into overtime. Yeah, uh, you know, that was a goal scorer's goal. And, and he came down and opened up. And... Uh, when those guys shoot like that and, and, and use a screen like he did there, it's a pretty tough shot on the goalie. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what, uh, uh, that's one of the reasons he's here, you know, to shoot the puck. And, and, and uh, he did a great job on that one. Cody, for you, when, you know, your te you see your team out there battling and they're out there, they're getting shots on that. They just haven't been able to find the back of the net. For you, do you have to almost try to elevate your game at that point to try to be able to, you know, make sure that it stays a one a one nothing game in that situation? Or, or what's that mentality for you? Um, I mean, for me, it's, it's um, you know, you try to obviously make sure you just stop the puck, um, especially when, you know, you see that the guys on the other end, you know, especially in the offensive zone, are, are battling and, and really, you know, spending a good amount of minutes down there working, grinding, getting their opportunities. Um, and, like, the whole thing with that, I, I wasn't really worried about, per se, you know, when we were going to score um, or if we were going to score. It was more of just when. Um, you know, yeah, their, their goalie was playing well, but just, you know, the looks that we were getting were, were, were good and, and quality. So, eventually the you know the the egg cracks and and you know you just kind of got to hold on um but yeah you definitely want to you know I, I wanted to keep it you know when we were down one nothing just keep it one nothing um you know for as long as i could and and you know keep that tight to to keep us in it and, and you know allow the team to, to do their their job while i do mine 
Um, so for me, it was just you know just try to keep it you know within one one goal and keep it as close as possible, and, and you know thankfully it worked out. You go through a period where you only see four shots. Do you, you, what, what are you thinking back there when you, when because yeah you have time like they'll come into the zone, but only seeing four shots in a period does it? Like, it's almost like when a, when a kicker gets iced in football on a field goal, or, or like when a pitcher waits a long time in the dugout during a during a, a big inning. You know what, what's that thought there uh, between the pipes? Um, I mean for me it's a. Uh, you know, uh, people have noticed I, I kind of dance or bob my head, and you know, it's it's just trying to keep loose, trying to keep your mind off everything. Um, for me, I play the best when I'm not thinking about anything, when I'm just playing. Um, so you know, whatever I can do back there to kind of just keep my mind off everything, stay loose, and stay kind of busy, or whether it be you know dancing or singing along, talking to myself sometimes, you yeah. know, singing whatever the DJ is playing on the on the um, you know, there's a sound system there, but. Um, yeah, it's it's you know you, you try to just for me personally just stay busy, um, keep it light, you know not overthink things and then just play because um, I tend to I you know can get in a, get myself into kind of trouble when I overthink things, so for me just keeping it light, keeping it simple. I didn't I didn't realize until I went on Facebook I think after the Saturday game and I saw fans start commenting I uh, love seeing Cody just dan just dancing <laughs> and singing along. Um, but well, that's good. I, so I that's like the idea of he's dancing. That means we were the pucks down the other end. So obviously yeah. we're doing something. But right. but just what he said that that that's a that's a veteran guy that's learned how to, how to do those moments. And and you know they always talk about a guy always stops 60 shots. He must be a great goaltender. And a lot of times you know when you're in that zone you're just stopping pucks and you're not sure. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't know if you if, if you're just stopping the puck. And and so sometimes those nights when you know they only get 14, 15, or, or maybe even 20 shots. Sometimes yeah. depends on the, on the period. Th those are the nights where the guy, like you've got to work your tail off to, to make sure that you're focused, and uh, yep. uh, th th a lot of young goalies have to go through that and learn it. And, and he's learned it. And uh, as I said, you do whatever you have to do to. to uh, as he said, he danced. Uh, when I played, when I was younger, I, I used to look in the crowd and, and, and just uh, whatever makes you relaxed and focused, that's what you've got to do. Well, it's also good to know that you, that you guys can hear the music down, down <laughs> yeah. on the ice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because um, I, I know that Don Johnson, the director of game day, he's, he's every week, every yeah. week leading up to games, it's a battle for him making sure that the sound system's ready to go there. But uh, um, but so back back to the game at hand. You, you guys end up going down 2-1 there with about 10 minutes left to go. And uh, – uh, you're, you're, it starts to get late, and there's about two, two and a half minutes left. A lot more pressure in the attacking zone once again, and uh, it went from Kramer, two guys on Danbury. They, lost, they they went down in the corner, led for Kramer, go behind the net, throw it out in front, and there was uh, Jan being able to tap one home to tie it. Well, we changed the lines up a little bit with about five minutes left and, and, and just uh, tried to give uh, at that point when, when things, uh, as you said, uh, it wasn't like we were playing bad, but we, you, know, you, you got to change something to change it j just for the sake of changing. And, and I, I, I changed the lines a little bit, and I, they got uh, mixed up a little bit. And uh, uh, I, I think it gave us a little bit of flavor. And uh, I give the guys a lot of credit. The, the, the last four minutes of a game and overtime, and, and uh, we have been very, very strong. And, and for some reason, we seem to know how to kick it in. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's uh, the conditioning when the coach skates us, or, <laughs> or, or I'm not sure. But uh, I, th th they've got something from within, and, and that's come that's comes from the room. And, and th that's why I'm excited about this team, because you know wh when you when you can get all of a sudden that you know when we have to kick it in, and uh, you know may maybe we should kick it in a little sooner. But uh, when you have to kick it in like that at the last couple of minutes of, uh, of a game, and we've done it all season, uh, uh, and success happened. Now. If they don't score there, if your team doesn't score there, how much longer was it until Cody made his way to the bench? Actually, I, uh, him and I were looking at each other. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was at that time. And, I, I was hoping for a, a face-off so we could get a, a timeout in that. But uh, um, as I said, we kept pressure down there. And then uh, actually, I, I looked at him and because I, I think you were yelling at, uh, at yeah, the bench. Yeah, I was yelling there. at you. Yeah. And, and, and uh, <laughs> um, all of a sudden, I was just about to do it, and then next thing you know, the puck went in the net. So uh, I didn't have to pull him. Well, good thing, and then yeah. you guys go, and then you guys go to overtime, and uh, you get two minutes in between overtime. You get you get your three on three line set. You're able to set up how you want to attack it. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between when you give up that late goal that it sends it to overtime, and a difference when you score that late goal to force overtime? 
Well, I think most of the time, I think that gives us a little bit more energy. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, we, we've been on the other end too. So I, I, I think it's just a matter of, of, of how you look at it and, 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 and go into it. And uh, I, I just think our guys feel comfortable. Uh, I usually use two forwards and one D. And uh, the, the combinations we put out there have, have been successful. One night I had uh, I had Schnappi and, and uh, Baker out there, and uh, someone said to me, "Well." well Where'd you see that combination? And uh, I don't know. And uh, we scored. So uh, uh, there's certain guys that uh, uh, two or uh, three on three that seem like they click, and it's not always the guys that you imagine that should be playing together. Uh, uh, I know uh, uh, Panny and Pesty played together the other night, but then uh, uh, I, I put Koplinger with uh, uh, Sally there, and uh, it worked out. It worked out, and it was Joe. Josh yeah. and then and then yeah. and then Jan and, and yeah. Jan makes a nice move. Uh, he spins away, comes right in front, and then there was Copes on the doorstep for the uh, for the tip in to win it. Well, the, the Cody actually said it was it was probably the uh, the greasiest goal I guess uh, in overtime. <laughs> uh, uh, the, I, I, we watched the tape and, and actually the, the team watched the tape and uh, I, I don't know what they were doing. Uh, and thank God uh, uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, we made some plays. We went to the net. Uh, Copes went to the net and uh, Joe Kennedy held on the puck earlier instead of just giving it up uh, and, and we made a great play and uh, as I said I give the guys a lot of credit they, 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 they took advantage of something like that and Sally went to the net and uh, there was a rebound and you know the seas parted and Cope went, went, went in and uh, tapped it in so uh, it, it, was, it turned out to be a good evening for us. No it did a 3-2 victory in overtime that allowed to set things up to try to take this weekend and take the season series as well on Saturday and we'll get to that here on the other side of this timeout. Got to run to a break here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB if you're driving around here in Winston-Salem make your way down here to Earl's to come um, Catch the rest of us. Also got free with Bill tickets as well for this Saturday on hand here tonight. We got more to come here on the Coach Aries Show. Steve Harrison, Cody Karpinski with us here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. The Flow Garage app helps you keep up with your vehicles from anywhere. Flow customers can request service appointments, receive text and video updates, view sales and service history, receive recall notifications, and even get purchase offers via Flow Offer to Purchase. Download the app today. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. When it comes to performance, speed matters just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry, we're taking Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. 
We're back here live at Earl's newest edition of the Coach Harry Show here on Tuesday evening. Brendan Riley being joined by the head coach Steve Harrison and netminder Cody Karpinski here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. And we just got into game one back on Friday night. And uh, game two, you know, another exciting one in a little bit of a different fashion. Maybe not as so much for, for you, Coach, with how the game <laughs> ended, uh, ended up uh, ended up ended up being. But, uh, but an exciting game. Uh, you know, things were tense there. But going in into that game you come off the overtime victory you want to keep that momentum rolling and uh, just what did you say to your team leading into that game be able to make sure they got out there and they were able to go out and try to be able to take those three points again well we, we watched a couple of things on, on, the, on the film there and, and, and just for a couple of minutes and, and showed some things that I, I think we got to be better at and and for 39 minutes and uh, uh, 45 seconds uh, uh, I, I thought we were awesome uh, we got great goaltending uh, defense was good. We didn't give up a whole lot. Uh, uh, I, I, sitting there, you know, closing out the second period uh, that night there, as I said, we wanted to, we wanted to focus on, on the things that we do uh, well and the things that we weren't doing well uh, improve on. And I, I, I'm sitting back going, Jesus, it's 4 nothing, and, and uh, uh, we've had some shots and, 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 and the momentum's going in our way and everything like that. And then... Uh, uh, the end of the second period happened, and uh, we had to fight our way out of it to, to, to win a hockey game. For you guys going into that, you're trying to get another quick start. They came out, and they and they looked like they were ready to respond. They were getting uh, early pressure there. They were getting early shots on you there, Cody. Um, for you going into a second game of a weekend facing the same team, is it? and I've, I asked Mario this earlier this year when he was on the show, is it almost like kind of like a pitcher when he's seeing someone the next time in a series, in a, in a three-game series, playoff series, that you kind of pick up on their tendencies, they pick up on your tendencies? Has anything changed for you going into another game? Um, I don't think that anything per se needs to change unless, you know, like the, the first night is, you know, like a blowout or, or, or that, you know, you get exposed somehow or some way, then, then yeah, you make adjustments, um, whether it be D-zone coverage or, or, you know, or personally on my game, you know, things I need to adjust. Um, you know things like their their power play or something you know set up a certain way um, you know the more you see it the more you can kind of read and, and predict um, you know but uh, try not to change too much um, you know you want to do the things that make you who you are um, and you know give you success um, so for me personally you know I didn't try not to change too much um, you know maybe just play a couple of different situations a little bit differently um, but, but yeah, not, not too many changes, uh, just very minute ones, you know, just a couple of different angles, a couple of different, you know, um, of different approaches, if you will. Um, but other than that, not too many different changes. And like I said, like, uh, unless like the first day was, or the first game was, you know, like a blowout or, or, you know, I, you know, got exposed somehow, um, in some way, then yeah, then you, you change it up a bunch. But, but yeah, for me, the, the first game, you know, I thought I played pretty well and, and especially the guys in front of me made it pretty easy so um, you know there was really no need to change too much and it, and it worked out you was you would stand there early pressure their early attack and then you go on the short end about 15 minutes into that period you go on the short end and uh, they're in the mid you guys are in the midst of a change schnapp stays out there he goes he puts pressure on Connor McCollum and he ends up coming up with one of the Biggest hustle goals, I think that yeah. I, I think that's the way you put it. But one of the yeah. biggest, most impressive hustle goals that I, that I've seen there, and uh, and gives your team that one nothing lead. You know, the the last uh, Stompy could be a, a a big influence on our hockey team, and uh, I, I think the last couple of weeks he's starting to uh, get in that zone where uh, I've talked to him a couple of times where. Uh, he, he, if, if we want to go where we want to go, his, his enthusiasm, his, his temperament on the ice uh, and what he brings to us uh, is a big part of it. Uh, him killing penalties is a huge part of it. And, and uh, yeah. uh, 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 when we get that from him and, and that, that enthusiasm and that drive and his legs are going, uh, uh, he, he's a force. He, he's a big guy. He, like, he can go to the net. And as I said, he scored some big goals for us. And uh, that, that goal there, shorthanded, uh, that, that was just all heart. And, and the, yep. the, the boys responded after that because it was a great effort. And for you being a teammate, being out there on the ice with him, I mean, that just has to get you fired up. Oh, yeah, 100%, especially on a, on a penalty kill to, to do what he did. You know, even if he, he didn't score, just the, the amount of time he basically just put it on his back and basically just kept it in their zone. I mean, that... That play, pays dividends. 
um, you know, whether it be immediately or, you know, later on in the game or, or you know, what have you, that, that matters. Um, and, I mean, thankfully, he made, a, he made a great play and heck of an effort on, on you know, just himself alone, basically. Um, you know, thankfully did score and, and got us some, some much-needed momentum. But, but, yeah, you know, took the wind right out of their sails. And it, it definitely, you know, it helps boost everyone else because everyone else, you know, sees it and is like, okay, Schnappi's going. Like, I got to pick it up a little bit or, or you know, I got to, you know, dial it in a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, it definitely helps the team and, and, you know, myself get going. And it led to a little bit of frustration there for Danbury as well, and they end up taking a five-minute major there late in the yeah. late in the first period. You guys don't get much going there on that first almost half of that yeah. five minute, but you come out in the second. Kramer scores 13 seconds in, and then from there the floodgates just kind of open. Yeah, sometimes that those five-minute power plays are, are uh, you almost want to call a timeout sometimes because uh, everybody thinks oh we got five minutes to score a goal and. Uh, sometimes there's a bit of a letdown, and that, there, there was a bit of a letdown for us. Uh, that, that two minutes was, uh, uh, I thought I was going to have to jump on the ice and carry the puck <laughs> down the ice. I mean, that's, uh, it, it wasn't very good. Uh, uh, but we, I told the guys at the end of the day, we got to just regroup. We, we knew they were going to come out. And that, any team, uh, your second night, you, you lose uh, like the way they did on uh, Friday night. You knew they were going to come out with a lot of energy. And, uh, and sometimes, well, geez, they, they kind of took it to you at the start. Well, not really. Like you, you got to, you got to be able to handle that wave a little bit earlier. I thought we handled it perfectly, and uh, then we started to get rolling. And 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 that's what good teams do. Like you, you, you got to sometimes take your hat off to, to other teams because they, they're they're working their tails off too. So uh, they they came with some pressure, but uh, as I said, I, it wasn't anything that uh, uh, I was like, oh my God, like we can't get over our zone or something. But uh, as I said, just the way we responded to that. Uh, we was great and uh, uh, as I said then we went into the second period don't change Let, let's get regrouping on this on this power play here and uh, I think we scored but like, like, uh, I'm not sure how Thir fast 13 seconds 13, 13 seconds 13 there seconds. I hadn't even uh, hadn't even had a cough candy yet I, I, I was still <laughs> sitting there waiting <laughs> I was like boy oh boy this is quick so but uh, great response to the guys and uh, then we kept rolling they yeah, kept rolling end up getting a goal there later from Tucker then uh, Schnapp gets another goal uh, doing it all himself there but then you guys are rolling leading four to nothing and um, from there you know, people I mean myself personally up in the booth you know I was just like all right well just take care of business and, and, and get out of here but it, but as it always goes in sports or as it goes uh, at times next thing you know they score late there in that second and then boom got a little bit of a hockey game with them feeling some momentum going into that third well we talk about uh, time management uh, uh, end of the period uh, who you're out against, uh, a lot of things like that. And uh, I like to say I have never mentioned it, but uh, his ears are probably <laughs> bleeding from me talking about it so much. But, uh, and, and again, about not changing what, what we're trying to do. And uh, we made a couple mistakes. And, and, and they, whenever you get scored on late in a period like that, uh, for, for some reason, it just, it's hard to regroup. And uh, the third period, we came out, and uh, it wasn't the effort. It wasn't uh, the heart. It wasn't anything like that. It's just we were off. Uh, the, the, the train went off the rails, and, and we were trying to get it back. And uh, as I said, uh, until they scored that third goal, and uh, somebody kind of got a little upset, uh, um, we've got to be played the same way we got to play all the time. And uh, I give the guys a lot of credit uh, for the boat. 12 minutes there in the third period, uh, it wasn't very good. But you know what? We, we dug down. We, we, we found a way to win. And, 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 you know, when you get into playoff hockey, that's what you have to do. It doesn't matter if you, how you played that night. It, it, it's if you won or lost. And, and as I said, I give the guys a lot of credit. Uh, when things weren't going very good, they found a way to come together and, and finish that off. And so that, that's an, and he made a couple saves there when we needed them. And, and as I said, ju just the whole team. Put their came together and, and we got the job done. Carps for you pick up a one goal win like that and, and um, or two on the weekend uh, for that matter. Just winning those tight games does that give you any bit a little bit more of a boost going forward? As if, if it was a little bit of a easier night for you necessarily, but another one goal victory, another tight game, tight win that you pick up that has to be a little bit of a jolt for you. Yeah, um, you know it definitely helps get your momentum going. Um, whenever you're winning, you know just as a team, everything seems to be going well. Um, you know, and then on the other side of that, you know, if you're not winning, things tend to be, you know, a little bit tougher. You're gripping your stick a little bit tighter, you know, this and that, doing things maybe, maybe you're not always accustomed to doing or this or that. But, um, but yeah, um, definitely winning two games in a row and, and getting a sweep on a, on a 
good team that's you know higher in the standings and, and considered one of our rivals. Um, yeah, it definitely helps your momentum and um, helps you kind of just dial it in. And it's like, okay, well, you know, if I, you know, we did this and you know we we've accomplished this and, and did well against this team, um, you know, we can you know do it against everyone else, right? So um, definitely helps you know the momentum, uh, confidence as always. Um, you know that you know people can be like, oh, this or that, but but it you know it definitely helps when you win in because it's much easier to keep the ball rolling forward than it is to kind of <laughs> stop it and then get it going the other way. Mm. So we'll get we'll get in this kind of back on the tracks like like you said. And one thing that uh, improved on the weekend was penalty kill. After Mississippi had had some yeah. had, had some success against your penalty kill unit, penalty kill comes back out this weekend, pitches a shutout there. You get the shorthanded goal as well, but it has to be good to see now uh, that penalty kill starting to come back to what we saw earlier on this yeah, year. Yeah, and, and it's just like things things go in spurts, and and, and we weren't very good for a while there, and uh, you know before Christmas there we were unbelievable. So uh, we we went through a spurt there that uh, uh, I, I think a lot of think the factors came into play there but uh, we, we this weekend here we kind of turned the tide a little bit I used maybe a, some other players too to maybe relieve it because you know we had uh, a couple times we had back-to-back -back penalties and uh, when you get that you, you can't really use the same four guys up front and uh, but but I thought they did a great job uh, they, they let him see the puck and uh, overall, I, I just thought it was a, a great effort on their part, and probably led by Keeley and Schnappy there. But even the other guys who, who killed penalties uh, that night there, um, I, I thought did a magnificent job and uh, did what we wanted to do. Well, ended up working out. Take five points on the weekend from Danbury, 3-2 on Friday in overtime, then 4-3 on Saturday. And now you guys get ready to go see uh, a familiar foe in Blue Ridge coming up in this uh, coming up this weekend up in Whitville. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. we got to run to another timeout. We're on the Coach Harry Show live from Earl's here in Winston-Salem. Good crowd on hand. Still got time to get down here to pick up your tickets for Whitville coming up this Saturday. That's 7 p.m. Puck Toronto coming up from the Apex Center. We're back with more here on the Coach Harry Show after this on Thunderbirds TV and on WTO. OB. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Flow Cadillac is a proud sponsor of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Visit 1400 South Stratford Road for a free test drive. Or go online to flowcadillac.com to schedule a sales or service appointment. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call.
We're back here on the Coach Harry Show, live from Earl's here in Winston-Salem. Brennan Riley being joined by the head coach, Steve Harrison, and netminder Cody Karpinski here on a Tuesday night on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. So we got into the weekend, and uh, we'll get to Blue Ridge here in a little bit. But, uh, Cody, we have you on here for the night. We got uh, the next uh, few minutes or so to, uh, to talk to you so that the fans can get to know you a little bit more here. Um, you know, been here for a few weeks now, settling in, um, and, and, you know, starting to find your own here between the pipes for the Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds and uh, for you from Chicago uh, where, where'd you get your start playing hockey where'd you find your way into the game and find your way into the love of the game um, so my dad uh, my dad played um, I had you know I had three old, or have three older cousins um, who all played and I kind of you know have a hockey family um, so it was kind of a you know well when's he gonna start um, ironically I had to beg my dad to start he wanted me to play golf um, <laughs> really yeah so um, yeah, and then, um, you know, just growing up in the suburbs of Chicago, um, you know, played for every AAA organization there was, uh, most of the time for mission, a year at TI and a year at CYA, who is now the Tri-City Storm, um, but yeah, just, uh, bounced around a bit, and, um, you know, left the game for a bit, and came back at, at 20, and, and you know, here I am. Yeah, and you ended up going to Lindenwood University, uh, ACHA school. Um, for for you in college, spent four years there. What was that experience for you like there playing for uh, Lindenwood? Unbelievable. Um, I played for you know uh, Rick Zombo, who you know played what is it seven hundred and fifty oh, games? Time, yeah. yeah, in the in the NHL. So um, you know the the ACHA is an interesting uh, ball act. Sometimes you know depending on how your your program and your school and the budgeting and all that was structured. Um, you know, you can have some, you know, very strong programs or, you know, very hit or miss ones. And, and, and thankfully, our, our university, you know, fully backed us. And, um, you know, we had an unbelievable, you know, not only coach, but, but complete support system. Um, you know, Ted Sater was there for, for a while, who, you know, coached in the NHL, uh, um, you know, Swedish national team, things like that. He was around. Um, Mark Abney, who, you know, again, another guy who, who really helped us. Um, but yeah, it, it was great. Um, obviously, you know, we, uh, our, our whole entire year was based around winning nationals, and, and, and thankfully, you know, we got to accomplish that while I was there. So, um, you know, yeah, it couldn't have, couldn't have been a better, better uh, situation for me. And, and you know, um, Zombo kind of really prepared, like myself personally, for, for, for pros. Um, you know, he, he treated us, A, like adults. Um, you know, you handle your business and, and make sure everything's good. And he treats you like a professional. And, um, you know, a guy who had spent as long of a time in the NHL as he did, um, you kind of want to take what he says to heart. Um, maybe maybe open up your ears a little bit more when he talks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can always learn stuff. So, um, yeah, I tried to just soak up as much as I could uh, from him and, you know, everyone else involved. And, and uh, yeah, it was a unbelievable experience. You know, still very close with pretty much all my teammates there. So, no, and that, that's awesome. And then you, you go to Lindenwood, and then you, you end up turning pro. And, and you, as you said, you know, guy that's kind of bounced around, and you know, spent time all the way from the coast down to the FPHL, time in the SPHL as well. The I AHL. Mean, I, the AHL. Yeah. Yep. Um, so a, a, a lot of. A lot of miles. Uh, and we were talking with Copes last yeah. week, and he said, uh, you "Just pick up the suitcase and go." But for you, you know, going around to the different leagues, and uh, you know, the, the the suitcase must have a little wear. For you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, it's a good suitcase. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, Scott. Um, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. You, you know, um, my biggest thing is, you know, I just want to play, and I want to just beat the hell out of everyone. I just want to play, and I want to win. Um, I don't care where it's at. I don't care who it's for. I don't care, you know, whether it's in this league or that league or whatever. Um, you know, personally, I'd you know like to go as, as high as I can. But you know, when I'm I'm here or I'm there, you know, my goal is the same. It's just win games, and that's all. At the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Um, you know, both for for me personally, but also the team. Um, you know, I do my job, which helps everyone else do theirs. So. Um, I figure I, I do that, and you know, chances are we'll be on the the good side of rather than the bad side. Yeah, and it's turned out that way, and you know, you started to settle in, and, and you know, started to um, you know find your footing there between between the pipes here for uh, for the side. Um, but so we asked questions to the crowd or 
questions from the crowd, and uh, all, all of them are for you. So uh, <laughs> I'm scrapping the rest of the questions that uh, I yeah. have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Coach, Coach, okay. you, you can, you can we'll take, go it, take a breather. Yeah, yeah, you can okay. go, you, can, you know, take a step off here for a few <laughs> seconds. But, uh, um, but Cody, for you, uh, the first one, um, what do you think about the crowd in the annex? Oh, um, thankfully now I'm on the, the good side, the home side of it. Um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 was, it was always great. Um, you know, uh, I'd started off uh, my first year pro uh, in, in the Fed, at least, uh, when I got there for Watertown. And, um, you know, it was always cool coming to the annex because, you know, we knew there was going to be, a, you know, three, 4,000 people there. Um, which it, and, and it's just the support between the booster clubs, the fans, everyone around town. Like it's 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 great to see. Um, and not that you know you ever want to, I guess, try more, but you definitely you know want to make sure that you take care of business at home. And and you know it it helps us out that much more. You know, yeah, we get a you know perfect example. We get Schnapp school there, and that penalty kill um, gets everyone going, and then the crowds into it, and then it's like okay. Let's you know. Let's keep this ball rolling, and 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 yeah, definitely, it, it it's great just playing in front of a, a passionate fan base. What's the been the biggest adjustment for you coming to Carolina? Um, biggest adjustment for me has been um, trying to be more pa more patient. Um, you know, you can say what you want about the the different levels, um, but you just gotta. Uh, I feel like um, there's always gonna be an adjustment between levels, um, but. But for me, it was uh, staying just a, a bit more patient. Um, you have to approach point shots a little bit differently, um, which is, you know, something, you know, I've been trying to get better at, um, especially, you know, I, I feel like that might be, you know, one of the areas that I, I want, would like to get better at. Um, but, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely just, just staying just a little bit more patient. Um, you have to be a, a bit more methodical with your approach and things. Um, whereas, you know, let's say you go up to the coast or the A or, you know, the game's just that much quicker. Um, so it's less time to think, um, which for me is better. But but also, you know, on the other side of that, when it when it is, you know, when you're here, um, you do have to be more patient, stay on your feet, hold your feet just a little bit longer, thing, little things like that, um, which, you know, frankly, just, just takes time, um, you know, and, and obviously practices and everything else helps. But, but it is like it, what matters is the games. Um, so game speed and, and you know your approach with that has to be just a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm doing a little bit better job adjusting and, and being a bit more patient and um, you know less a little bit less less wild, if you will, um, which I, I, I think you know in turn helps me and then helps the team. So is it almost a little bit less reactionary or more that you're able to set up and see things a little bit better, or, or is it just because of you know a higher league being that much quicker, or how does that factor? Um, it's more of the, okay, so you can kind of predict things a little bit easier in higher leagues. Um, you can assume this guy is going to be there. Um, you know, for a player, you can make a blind area pass um, because you know that guy is going to be there. Um, you know, things like that. You know, your, your, your chips in and out of zones, things like that. Um, you know, your, your, your top six, you know, you're pretty much you're guaranteed to score, and if you don't score, you know, things like that, um, you know, versus like, you know, your maybe like third line per se and then your 10th forward, um, you know, their job is to, you know, really either gain some momentum, emotion, whatever it might be, and, and basically shut down their other lines. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it, it's a just a bit different. Um, you just, for me, just have to be a bit more patient, um, have to just read it a little bit better. Um, more of, again, a more methodical approach as opposed to just kind of just running and gunning. Um, and I think that, you know, kind of, you can get kind of lost in that, um, overthinking things and, you know, again, which can kind of bite me in the butt. But, but yeah, it's, a, it, it's definitely, um, there's an adjustment between levels, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just hockey at the end of the day. You know, I just got to keep the puck out of the air. So, um, that's what I'm trying to do as best I can. And that's not just for goalies. Uh, that's for players, too. Players go up, and now all of a sudden I got the puck, and I think I got some time, and I don't have time. Or you move to the next level, and uh, now you really don't have time. So, and then you come down here, and you might have some time, and, uh, you know, you pass the puck when, oh, geez, I had time. And, and so, there, as, as Cody said, it, it doesn't matter if you're a goalie or a forward or a defenseman. And, uh, you, you know, you, you read situations as a defenseman, maybe at a, you know, in the East Coast Hockey League, and uh, you read it down here, and it maybe it's a little different.
different. So uh, yeah. there, there's a, there's an adjustment time in, 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 in the way the game's played a little bit. And uh, uh, it's not the effort. It's just, it's, as I said, it's just sometimes a little different and a little speedier on uh, a different level. So you got to be adjusted. Yep. For sure. Well, for you coming in, the first thing I noticed when you came onto the ice for your first day of practice, I know that fans, if when the first time they saw you was, uh, was your mask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean the, que the question here is, Cody, what's the story behind your awesome helmet? Uh, the story behind my awesome helmet is, uh, so during the off season, I work for a company called Goalie Parts slash Otney. Um, and basically, I, I build goalie masks and, and run a, a very large goalie store. Um, help my my boss, uh, Dennis Casper, which run a, a large goalie store. Um, basically, I was in need of a helmet. Um, that helmet, we had we had a Martin Brodeur, Devils one. We had a Felix Potvin, uh, you know, the cat blue is Toronto version. Um, and then we had an Eddie Belfort, the one I'm wearing, uh, just the red one lying around. And they were all three different sizes, but this one fit me the best. And I was like, mm, okay, um, which is even cooler, cool. Uh, just for myself personally because uh, during the off season I also you know since I got back into the game I, I, I trained with the Hawks all summer long mm -hmm. um, so it's it's cool you know you get to be around obviously the Blackhawks but then you know um, you know I, I got to somebody had brought up my helmet to Ed Belfour um, and he ended up coming to uh, a camp I was coaching at because of somebody had brought up my helmet to mm -hmm. him and he thought it was cool so that's to me that's that's pretty gnarly yeah no, that that's awesome. I mean, I, I was going to ask you about it at some point, but you know, that's why we got to hear on the show here yeah. tonight, to, to, uh, so that way everyone can hear it all at the same time. But uh, Cody, uh, great to have you here tonight. Great to have you here in Carolina as well. We got to run into another timeout here on the Coach Harry Show, live here from Earls in Winston Salem. Take a look at this weekend coming up, one game against Blue Ridge, and then also next Wednesday um, as well. We got more to get to. Getting ready to wrap things up here on the Coach Harry Show here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry, where tech Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Back here live at Earl's and in the final six minutes or so of our program here tonight. Brendan Riley being joined by the head coach Steve Harrison, netminder Cody Karpinski, are another edition of the Coach Harry Show. And uh, Coach, I just got a few minutes worth running to one final timeout. But a uh, uh, long week here this week. Uh, you don't play until Saturday night. So you uh, hope you guys have a little fun today there in practice with another three on three tournament here this year. Uh, yeah, since Christmas time, uh, every week has kind of been uh, thinking of how to make sure we're ready on the weekend. And uh, this week here with uh, uh, 
uh, we don't play till Saturday, so uh, we went did a little hot yoga yesterday, and uh, I think the boys enjoyed that, and that was fun. And then uh, we, we, they had a little uh, three-on-three tournament today, so uh, it's going to be back to work tomorrow. Do a little, uh, let the goalie see some pucks and get it ready, and then uh, hopefully Thursday and Friday, uh, two good practices, and going on the weekend uh, uh, with an attitude that uh, uh, maybe a little different than the last time we played them, and. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the response. I'm looking forward to see how we responded from last week to, to this week and uh, just a lot of things. So uh, every week's a learning week. And uh, as I said, I, I, I know the guys, I think they feel pretty good. Uh, a couple guys may be a little sick, but I think that's going around everywhere. So we got to put up with that. But for the most part, uh, uh, as I said, I, we're trying to gear up and, and, and get ready. And so when Saturday night drops the puck, it, uh, uh, we're putting our best foot forward. And it's uh, Blue Ridge seeing that you guys, uh, you beat them 5-4 to four in a shootout. They're in a Thursday night game back in the middle of January. Uh, but they, they're starting to play some good hockey. They're coming off a sweep over the weekend, the first in their franchise history. So it's a team that uh, playing better as of late 5-3-2, and two, and, and they're going to they're gonna come out gunning for you guys. Well, the, 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 our, 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 my theme this week here is work, 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 work. And, and that's what they're going to do. And if we don't work, 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 and outwork them, uh, it's going to be a long night. And uh, uh, they have a lot of pride. Uh, you can ask Cody. It doesn't matter where you are. If you play the game of hockey or you play sports, you have some pride. And, and those guys have a lot of pride in that dressing room across from us. And so we know they're going to come out. And, and he's got them working very well right now. And uh, are they as skilled as some other teams? Maybe not. But they come out and, and, and put their best foot forward and, 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 uh, and work their tails off. So... Uh, we're going to have to make sure we match that intensity and, 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 and outwork them and uh, uh, let, let our skill and let our game uh, dictate how it's going to be played. And so th that's going to be our, our, uh, our mantra this week of, of, of being uh, Blue Ridge. Well, coming up at 7 p.m. from the Apex Center this Saturday, Carolina and Blue Ridge. Once again here this season, we got to run into one final timeout. They'll wrap things up on the other side of this here on the Coach Harry Show on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Back here on the Coach Harry Show, getting ready to wrap this up here on a Tuesday evening. The head coach, Steve Harrison, and Cody Karpinski. Guys, thank you once again for joining us here tonight. Um, just any uh, closing comments here uh, before we have to get out of here? Well, great to see a good crowd here tonight. And uh, also, uh, I, I know a lot of fans are going to come up to Blue Ridge. So I, I'm looking forward to the weekend. And uh, great to have Cody on here tonight and, and hear some of the things uh, uh, he's 
over the years, and uh, no, it's been a great night. Cody, thank you for joining us here tonight. Any any, any comments for the uh, fans going into this weekend? No, I mean, uh, Coach kind of hit it on the head. You know, it's good to see the support in the middle of the week, you know, on a <laughs> weeknight. You know, we have <laughs> great people supporting us. Um, awesome to see, so thank you guys. Um, and, yeah, thanks for having me, B. Absolutely. That's that Coach Steve Harrison, that's Cody Karpinski. That does it for us here tonight on the Coach Harry Show here from Earl's. Uh, 7 p.m. puck drop on fr on Saturday, 6.30 pregame coverage starting here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTLB. That does it for here, uh, here tonight.